Good afternoon, everyone. Spring is going to hold off for a few weeks longer in Europe as this crushing Arctic low pulls all the way down to the Middle East, dropping sleet and snow across 75% of Europe all the way down into Syria. With all this hot and cold air mass mixing, supercells abounding across Europe, Russia, Italy, and more out-of-season storms in Myanmar. It's supposed to be the dry season throughout Southeast Asia, India, and the Himalaya until approximately late May or June. But massive thunderstorms ripping apart homes in Malaysia. Large cold blob now envelops the Indian Ocean. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. And check out my new episode with Michael Pope on Mini Ice Age Conversations where we talk about sustainability and the choices for you as we step forward into the new grand solar minimum where you're going to have to start relying more on yourself and your community for your lifestyle. And the media will have you believe that it's springtime already and winter is long gone and it was such a mild winter this year. It's an early arrival of spring, but hold on a second. Polar Blast is back for at least another couple weeks. This is going to drop temperatures 15 degrees Celsius below normal across 75% of Europe. As it unfolds, it should look a little something like this. That dark purple is intense cold. And that dark blue is going to sweep all the way over through Syria and Iraq. Along with this front, sleet and heavy snow. And as would be expected with the convection and the slamming together of warm and cooler air masses... Unusual supercells in unusual locations and the ferocity of the electrical storms apparently is something to behold. They can feel their skin and hair raising on their bodies in their homes. Let's start with Bavaria. Incredible image of the lightning here. That is that same purple color that was reported in India last week. Deep cells. That looks like something straight out of the central United States before tornadoes drop. Flooding, of course, atmospheric compression events all through Europe as these supercells tear through northern Adriatic region, supercell, and then convective snow, lightning, thunder snow, and then a hail event. And this is the aftermath. Depth here on the roads to give you a gauge of how much frozen precipitation came down. Jumping over to Moscow, you don't normally think of supercells 65 to 70,000 feet tall over the Russian capital, but this is what's happening. Southern Italy, supercells dropping hail. Northeast of Milan, the same types of supercells are being reported across Europe. Beautiful cloud formations accompanying this. And on a side note, how lucky is the photographer here? Look at that backdrop against the cathedrals. That's literally a once-in-a-lifetime shot, and the sunlight was perfect. Also, the ESSI large hail report out for 2016, 2,795 events. Now, with these convective cells already rolling in and dropping so much hail, I, in my personal opinion, feel that this is going to eclipse 3,000 events this year just from the number of incredible weather fronts coming together that are mixing in temperature, causing these same types of tornadoes that are spreading across Europe right now. Changing course a little bit here. Indian Ocean. Cold blobs should stay around for about two years. West Australia, exceptionally cold waters below normal, as well as South Africa. The cold blobs still off the west coast of Canada and the U.S., and with all the icebergs that are being pushed further south with the wind and the currents with the cooler waters, that really incredibly dark blue patch right there is about where the icebergs are delaying shipping across the entire North Atlantic. And I just wonder this year how much further those icebergs are going to push south. Two years ago, they landed up in Cape Cod. This year, I'm going to say it's going to be further down around New York somewhere. It will make the news when you see it. Some unusual out-of-season events here as well. Myanmar bracing for a tropical cyclone. This is the middle of the dry season. Water splashing festival occurs around this time. And they have this event because it is so dry. It is the driest of the dry season. Yet now, cyclones coming in. Also down in Malaysia, unusual thunderstorms with ferocious winds that either ripped homes off their foundations or just tore the roofs off. 
Take a look in the same area, Alor Setar. They do have some rain in April, but the main precipitation comes down in the regular monsoon, August, September, October. Look here at the track of the cyclone that's going to pass over into Southeast Asia. This is going to have an enormous amount of thunderstorms accompanying it. And those of you traveling up in Laos and northern Thailand, the roads you cross to go into these villages while you're trekking, when this cyclone dumps out and all these periphery storms sweep through, all those riverbeds and creeks that were dry when you went in there are going to be raging rivers and it's going to take weeks for them to get low enough so you can get back out. Bridges will be washed away. There'll be floods up the hills. And if you are trekking up there, please take caution and know that you might be stuck a little bit longer than intended and it will be extremely dangerous to cross those rivers. They will be raging torrents. Taking a look at Null School, you can easily see over Myanmar that purplish color is where the cyclone will be tomorrow. And then we just go right up to Japan. They're expecting record snow right now and intense precipitation events coming across Japan. Also Australia, center of the continent, known for being a desert. This year, record rains with the most amazing wildflower bloom. And here we are, intense rains again. Center of the Atlantic, that front swept off of the US is gonna be pushing over to Europe in about four days. And everywhere you look, there are out-of-season storms in the wrong places. The intensity of the vortices of the wind on our planet has definitely stepped up a notch. This is the beginning of the grand solar minimum weather changes that you'll see that are going to start destroying crops. They already have. You just have to keep your eyes open for regional losses at the moment. What I'm talking about is global crop losses above 45 north coming up by 2019. This is it. The grand solar minimum's here. The intensification is just going to step up and up and up from this point forward every year. So when you look back at 2014, you say, wow, these, these events sort of happened, but there was only one or two here and there. But now it's everywhere all the time, and this is the, going to be the new norm. And as we look through the entire cycle duration of coming up, the intensity from these events will not peak until 2024, 2025 with the coolest period. So use that as a gauge from the ramp up that you've seen last year to this year. You know the intensity is increased. You can feel it. You can see it. And I do thank you for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. And when we talk about crop losses, jump over to Trade Genius and talk to Bob Kudla. They're trading on the exact same areas where they see these storms intensifying year upon year. So it's setting a trend. So if you see that it's been flooding and atmospheric compression events in the last three years, you know probably that in the next year, they're also going to lose crops in the same place due to flooding. And if you pinpoint it on a map, and if you set up a database on the map so you can see exactly which places are repeating the pattern, you can see which crops are grown there, and then you can adjust your strategy. Now on the inverse, some places are actually becoming more mild with the weather, and there's also a way to track that.